everybody, this is just a very quick video because I got quite simply very mad at this video. I did not know that it existed up until this point, hence why I didn't do a reaction video before. Because it's a quick video and because my capture card, part of my whole camera setup, is not set up to capture a web page. It's set up for the lighting of a video game. I might be a bit jumping around. So, we're reacting to the death of Wildstar by Force Gaming because, honestly, they got everything wrong. So, the first thing that you're seeing is... Notice that on release, they even say Wildstar did good. We, we, can, we can listen to them say... 2014 and actually got a lot of early praise, ended up making over $26 million at launch, and it had... Remember that. Uh, j just keep that in mind. But I actually started one whole point forward because the first thing that's wrong that about I this video quite a bit of time with. I have several videos on my channel covering the game and I really enjoy Starts with Black Desert. Black Desert is a notorious pay to win MMO with a lot of RNG in it. So this guy is shilling a different MMO in a video of Death of Wildstar. First of all, that's highly disrespectful to begin with. Secondly, he mentions that the game did well at the start and then he goes on to say why he thinks the game failed and look at him kind of just like completely invalidating himself. As it turns out, that, among other reasons, just wasn't enough. So first off, the game launched with the subscription model. Now that is not a death knell for a game, but it certainly limits its initial player base. Except that you just said that initially it made $26 million, the initial player base was great. So how can something that limits the amount of players that a game enters with be the cause of its death when it started with a good player base? You either want to do something like Guild Wars 2 where you just have a, a you, you buy the base game and you get to play it and that's that's essentially it or you launch as a free-to-play MMO with some sort of microtransaction system which hopefully doesn't hinder the game's progression. Now it's worth noting they did have this cred system as far as I remember. Let's let's scroll through your comments shall we? Because I remember yeah, I remember this comment. I would point out that nearly every MMORPG with real long-term success is subscription-based. This includes World of Warcraft, Eve Online, RuneScape, and both Final Fantasy XI and XIV. Final Fantasy XIV has launched in 2014, and it's doing great. ...where you could purchase a token for a monthly sub, sort of like what the WoW token is that exists today. Either way, I think the sub model definitely hurt that initial thrust of people getting into Wildstar. And then we have the performance issues. Now, there was... The death of... You can't make a video stating the death of Wildstar, say it hurt the initial amount of people, but state that the game did really well initially at the start. That immediately invalidates your point, and... Yes, you will start with less players with a subscription model, but you need less players. And if you have a lot of players with a subscription model at launch, then obviously the subscription model did not cause the death of the game. There's still a decent chunk of people playing the game, lots of people on launch day jumping in, and like happens with a lot of games that have a ton of players dumped into one server, there were server problems, queue times, there were performance issues, there were all sorts of things. It wasn't just server problems. You had to reload UI 20 times. The game released in a very, very, very buggy state. And it was actually still buggy when I was playing it the last time, four years later, before the shutdown. There were a lot of issues that reached further than just the server issues. It reached... it just... It smelled like a game that got released too fast. And then the developers cannot could not keep up with bug fixes. So that is an issue, but saying, oh, it's it, it was server issues. No, th there were server queues, but every big release has server queues. That is not a reason in itself. Things that hurt people's initial impressions of the game. It's a real hard thing to kind of circumnavigate when you've got a ton of people all rushing into your game at once that are likely gonna leave after just a couple of weeks. How do you maintain the server integrity? It, it, you know what? It doesn't even really matter why it happens or how it happens. It just matters that 
performance issues at launch will negatively impact the impression that people have of your game. Then we've got the the hardcore marketing that we talked about. It was a bit over You cannot say that marketing has hurt the game when the game got good release sales. How can marketing hurt the game when it had good release sales? the top and I think it really hurt this idea that they would get a, an audience that wasn't interested in hardcore rating like we gotta be honest here a, a big chunk of player bases when it comes yet it obviously had a lot of audience at the start of the game launch and this audience was very obviously aware of the advertising comes to these uh, PvE centric MMOs is kind of the casual relaxed player base that, that maybe doesn't want to form a 40 man raid group or do the insane attunement. That's another problem. Wildstar had this ridiculous attunement system if you even wanted to raid. Attunements weren't that bad. It, they were pretty cumbersome as in it actually did take time to attune people. But honestly the fact that the gear RNG was a lot worse point, where the tank pants from an adventure, you needed to score gold in an adventure and you had a chance of them dropping, were better than tank pants that you could get in raids. Itemization was all over the place and loot RNG was a huge deal. You could run the same instance 200 times, you had no guarantee that you would get the gear that you actually needed. And yes, attuning 20 people was quite a big undertaking and my guild really struggled with that because people that would get attuned would get snatched up by other guilds. But what raiders struggled more is that genetic archives was 20 man, data escape was 40 man, and a lot of raid raiding guilds did not run two raid groups. They couldn't. They just wouldn't fill up the second one. So your full raid group would start to get stolen by different guilds at that point. And then obviously we had the PvP issues, where there was arena win trading, and if you were on a PvP server like me, if you had good arena PvP gear, you needed an army of 20 or 30 people in the open world to take you down. And as world... Um, how is it called? Repeatable quest zones were such a big part of your income and you were farming them a lot, it was very, very easy to just, for one player, to grief the whole zone. And it wasn't good fun. However, when gear imbalance is that bad, that whole fun just stops. Because having PvP before the whole arena win trading, which honestly happened really fast, was really fun. It was an actual fun experience. And then you had the issues of the first releases being just, you know, extra daily zones. Apparently the developers really loved daily zones and they were like, oh, we have a one year of content. And I remember everybody joking of, is it one year of daily zones? Because seriously, we're completely bored of daily zones. The fact that repairs would cost a lot, you would spend quite a lot even attempting to raid. Yeah, there were a lot of issues, but their hardcore initial advertising was not one of them. So the hardcore advertising and then just some of the, the actual game systems in the game kind of, I think, pushed away what could have been the casual player base. And again, the casual player base can make... There was quite a bit of casual player base. People loved the housing system and they loved to roleplay make up a, a large portion of your actual player base. Probably not a good idea if you're trying to make money and keep the studio going. I Once again, why would you state that the game did completely fine upon release and died later and state reasons as if why it died as the reasons that would have impacted it right at the start and not later in its the lifetime. The problem that Wildstar had was just the fact that it's an MMO, a genre of games that seems to be a dying breed. MMOs are games that require massive time investments. We've already got the saturated market with the behemoth MMOs that people are pretty much glued to and unlikely to leave anytime soon. You look at some of the big development studios out there in gaming, and they've pretty much given up on making traditional MMOs as we know them. Those have been replaced by titles like The Division and Destiny, what I would call MMO lights or quasi-MMOs. 
as this is the last point, I can just like pause it right here. How can you say that this contributed to the death of a game when it once again it released with great population? MMOs as a genre have a lot of players. Literally new ones get hundreds of thousands on release. You know why? Because people love the genre. And no, quasi-MMOs do not fill the void. Hence why the big ones like Elder Scrolls Online, Final Fantasy XIV, Guild Wars 2 and so on, doing great! They're living! You know why? Because people like MMOs and people play MMOs and spend money on MMOs. You advertised a fucking MMO at the start of the video. How can you say that this is a reason for the game death? You know what that sounds to me? It sounds to me like you actually didn't do your research.